Look, welcome. This is an, another session of Breaking Ground, and it's about getting to know different engineers in our sector and also around Brisbane and Queensland, wherever we can. We're again in the presence of greatness today. We've got uh, Rebecca Ryder with us here. Now, Rebecca is a project engineer with Transurban. So um, you can't see it, but behind us is this awesome view. And we've tried to get the capture of the view, but it didn't work out for us today. So if you can imagine looking um, southeast and, and northeast on the top of Brisbane, it's like being a total different world. So. Um, I don't know how you would spend it all day working here with that. Yeah, obviously a lot of distractions out the window, but we do what we can to, mm. to power on. And I see just over behind us, there's, I don't even know what the building is, but you can see the, the floor development, tower cranes, it's awesome. Right? It's yeah, training right outside the window. It's yeah. So Rebecca, we're just going to get to know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So where did you grow up? So I am a Kiwi, I have to yeah. admit, straight off the bat, yeah. the accent still gives me away. <laughs> I grew up in Dunedin, so uh, South Island of New Zealand. Okay. So how long have you been in Australia? About six months now. So it's right. pretty quick off the mark as soon as that border allowed to come across. And yeah. yep, have been since uh, yeah, October last year. Uh, so what brought you to Australia? It was the work opportunities. I okay. um, had the time under lockdown as we all did to sort of think about things and reflect on my journey and decided that it's time for a change. So um, yeah, yeah a bit of, bit of perspective on life and decided to make the leap. Right, so you've left family, everyone basically, and yep. come to Australia. That's wow. it, yep. well, that's, And was Queensland your first stop? It was, yeah. So I, again, just uh, it's all about who you know in Queensland. So I started looking yeah. with someone that I had worked with previously, actually over in Fiji, and they had, um, yeah, they were working here and said there were some amazing opportunities and got me in touch with some people. And um, yeah, but just followed my nose from there. And again, uh, finding a company or a, a team that was willing to bring me over in the middle of the Global pandemic was yeah. the key, so yeah, yeah making well. some bold moves, but managed to make it work, yeah. so it was great. And it, it is um, taking those opportunities, isn't it, to, you know, to take you where you need to go in your career, and I mean, it's a massive step to leave country and come over. That's right, yeah. 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 Um, now, so you studied engineering in New Zealand? That's right, yes, so I studied in Canterbury, Canterbury okay. University, and so I was there yeah. right at the tail end, so 2010, 2011, during the, the, the earthquakes, which I think ah. shaped, shaped my... Um, my path as well, um, yeah, right. but yeah, so it's a very interesting time to be a student in Canterbury. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so did you get involved in any engineering from the earthquake side of things? It wasn't the, uh, the student volunteer army, so yeah, right, getting okay. out there and seeing some of it, yeah, but more yeah. so it was probably our lecturers that were out there doing a lot of the assessments uh, and then coming back, and um, yeah. and then certainly there was the recovery work that happened for many years after that, yeah. yeah okay. But during the studies it was probably just more about seeing your lecturers come back from doing site inspections and, and then really shaping the, the content and the material that they taught us on the back of what was happening out, outside. So, yeah. yeah. Now, um, what field of engineering did you study? So I did get into geotechnical engineering right. originally okay. um, and did, did some additional study in seismic engineering. Yeah. Um, since then, I've taken a bit of a different path and gone into more project management um, side, of, side of engineering life, so just yeah. exploring that field. Um, but yeah, the sort of technical grounding, the background that I spent the civil geotechnical space has put me in good stead to, to branch off from there and try something else. Yeah, okay. And um, so you're on, you told me you're on secondment to Transurban, yes. and how's that going? Yeah, really great. It's an right. awesome team here, and um, yeah, I've just been able to get into some, see some big assets and big projects that have been happening around uh, Queensland, and again, it's all about yeah, forming that connections and, and the network in, in a new city, so it's yeah. been great. Okay, and so is this your uh, first uh, field work with uh, engineering, so post your studies? Uh, no, so I've, yeah, I've worked as a, more in the consultancy space, a more traditional design space in New Zealand, right. and then yeah. coming over here, um, and uh, pre prior to that, a bit of work in project management towards the tail end, and then coming over here with a bit more of a, a lens of trying to, yeah, see a bit more of the bigger picture, um, and use that design experience to then move into to other parts of the industry. Yeah, okay. Mm. All right. All right, so one of the challenges for engineers is to answer questions in one word oh. or, you know, a sentence. So <laughs> it's important that, you know, engineers give the details to mm. projects. So mm. we'll, we're um, just put you on a little bit of a challenge here. So, and while we're getting to know you as well. So, Rebecca, what was your first job? Uh, making smoothies at the local pool. Right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> And have you got a favourite superhero? <laughs> I found this one really hard. Um, <laughs> I, Wonder Woman, I just, I've got to do mm -hmm. that. The advocate one there, I think, yeah, yeah. pretty cool in the most uh, recent movie. Can't argue with Wonder Woman, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
And so what would you do to relax? Um, great question. I love getting out and walking. I think the river walk around for sprint is yeah, yeah. amazing. And I just yeah, love to get yeah. out, get in, back into nature as much as you can after being in a bit of a concrete jungle during yeah, the Yeah, the river walk. Yeah, mm. okay. And do you have a sport or a hobby? Um, I, not particularly here. I played soccer or football, I would say, back in, yeah. in New Zealand. But um, haven't haven't branched into a team here yet, but still love to just get out running and, and surfing and swimming. And, being active, very important, yeah. Isn't it? You've got to be really careful with the word football because oh. it so means so many things. <laughs> with, yeah. There's a few, yeah, there's many, yeah, a few, few key words I've just learned to make sure I keep an eye on coming over from New Zealand, and that, that's one of them. Right. Yeah, various yeah. terms. Oh, yeah, right. give you give you away as a Kiwi over here. Yeah, yeah. but it just doesn't matter because in Australia, football means so many things. <laughs> with the team, right? yeah. We'll add soccer to it. Determine the code, yeah. And what's your idea of an ideal getaway? Oh, I love getting to the beach as much as yeah. I love. I really enjoy Brisbane. I think getting to the coast for me. Um, yeah. yeah. So we, having the Gold Coast and the sunny coast here is amazing. I love that. Um, favorite food? <laughs> Can't choose. <laughs> <laughs> Pass on that one. <laughs> All right. Um, last chance. Favorite food? No. no I oh, really, okay. Yeah. Well, too, yeah. Too many. I'm so bad at that. Mate, one. if you had your last ten dollars, what would you do? This one again, like I think I thought too hard on this one, and this is where I'm going to do the engineer response and go too far down the line. Is this like my last ten dollars ever? Like yeah, that, ever? That's, you got ten bucks in your back huge. pocket. Yeah. yeah, that made me really go, oh my goodness. Yeah, you think about what you throw for ten bucks away on. Mm. Um, if I had to, had to choose something, I, I'd go for a good quality journal, so right. something that's really nice writing paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, now, if you had the opportunity to invite two people over for dinner, who would they be? <laughs> is another good one uh, <laughs> um so for me at the moment uh yeah have, uh, yeah really enjoyed reading and listening to a lot of audiobooks by Brene Brown I'm right sure been okay. in the, in the yeah. um, public eye a lot recently and I think a lot of people have tapped into her material and um the other one which I think would be great to get together with Brene Brown would be a David Goggins because again right. just on the, the training and the physical side of things and mentality um, mindset yeah. so wow. those two together be powerful for nice. the conversation. Nice, be very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and who would you, have you got a, who, is there someone that you would say is the greatest influencer on your career so far? I, yeah, thought about this. Um, not one particular person, and I think that's probably because whenever I meet people, um, you always learn something from yeah. no matter who you yeah. come across. So yeah, I that's don't, a really good point. Yeah, yeah. sort of take away, you just always have something to learn, and it's probably just more about how you go about finding out what that is. So. Yeah. Yeah, right. lots of different people and lots of mentors and, and yeah. people that have had an influence on me in my career. Right, mm. right. Now, we're, we're, we're going to do a, a credibility test <laughs> here, uh, Rebecca. Now, this is the, the Bureau of Engineering's um, credibility integrity test. Please now, don't did make you, me do it. Did, did, you diagram, <laughs> did you know there was a Bureau of Engineering integrity? It didn't. Right, okay. So, we're, and it's based on three questions. So, we're, we're going to be able to judge your credibility in three questions. So. <laughs> You right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, so we can't go any further in this uh, interview without checking your credibility. Understood. All right. Um, do you have ever sung, or do you, or have you ever sung in the shower? <laughs> uh, yes. Right, all right. Um, do you snore? Uh, no, but terrible sleep talker, so I right. feel like that's okay. right up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And look, last question, um, have you ever listened to an ABBA song? <laughs> yes, of course. All right, all right. Well, I pass? You have, you've got lots of integrity there. So, yeah, yeah. Great. All right. All right, all right, mate. Now, um, the really important part of this conversation is um, providing, you know, how you feel, um, you know, adv advice really into industry for other engineers coming in. And, um, and I think, um, particularly that you're a woman in engineering too. It's uh, fantastic for other young ladies to see that, you know, you're surviving <laughs> and making a mark, you know, yeah. in industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you had, if you could describe a successful engineer in three words, what do you reckon the three words would be? Oh, good, good little summary. Um, number one has to be communicative, so being able to communicate, that's, yeah. that's a big one that I think yeah. I was back in the past. Um, I guess the relative, a new realisation for me is all about being curious. So right. I think that's yeah, a big yeah, one for yeah, our yeah. industry that's built on a lot of tradition and standards, but um, yeah. you know, being curious is going to what allows us to go forward. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last one again, which is maybe not what you would first come to mind, but, but being compassionate. 
yeah. and I think that's starting to really show through in our industry and the fact that we can't get by just mm. crunching numbers and rolling no. out designs anymore. We really need to be leaders and advocates um, exactly. for society. Wow. Yeah. Well, like, and we're part of teams, aren't we? We work with people. It's not just buildings or yeah. whatever. Wow. Yeah. Um, what would have been the best day in your engineering career so far? <laughs> um, for me, it was writing a particular proposal for a project where um, it was, uh, yeah, maybe something that was a bit beyond my reach and okay. at the time, and um, sort of had the had a bit of a fork in the road where I had a couple of seniors that weren't able to continue on with it, and it was sort of left to me to decide, you know, um, if we go for this, you're going to need to own it, you need to be responsible for it, you need to take it yeah. on, and it was really that that step change in my career where I went, okay, I'm going to give this a go. I feel, felt like I wasn't sure if I was um, able to, I didn't know if I was going to succeed or fail, um, but yeah, going through that process and testing myself and then actually getting a successful outcome from oh, that and okay. being like, being yeah. able to own that package of work and deliver on it and yeah, then kind yeah, of yeah. see the power that you can have over, um, over an outcome. So that was sort of a real turning point for me. And... Um, Engineering is challenging all the time, but um, I, what would be one of the biggest challenges for engineers today, in particular young, young engineers like yourself? Yes, I think that there's the, the speed of information that we're having to deal with. Um, we've come from a, a past and a history that was reliant on um, paper and transactions and, and things taking time to process. Now we're having to keep up with a lot of data, a lot of information, and um, having to update our systems and tools to cope with that, as well as ourselves working as teams. Um, as, massive challenge and I see that across the board with a lot of companies and a lot of different groups so yeah. have found that uh, sharing I guess across those different boundaries and um, yeah being open to, to sharing information as, as much as we can with others um, mm. it doesn't it's not about holding and owning information anymore no. it's about being able to yeah move things on in a timely way and, and allow teams to do their various parts in a fast moving world yeah yeah, yeah wow and um, so what advice would you give to some young people that were wanting to come into the industry? I would wholeheartedly, yeah, encourage them. I, I think that it's an amazing career opportunity to move into an industry that gives you a platform and a starting point mm -hmm. and, and something that you can have a lot of influence over the societies and communities that we have in our world and just knowing the breadth of opportunity once once you get into the industry. Um, there is, you know, the science and maths that you do have to get through and you have to be able to have those fundamental understandings, but then once you get into the, the working world, you, you can take engineering wherever you'd like to go. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hey, fantastic, Rebecca, thank you so much for your time. And can you also uh, say thank you to Transurban for letting us have you for a few minutes today and, and thank you for inviting us in here and having this fantastic outlook. But more importantly, getting your outlook on you know your career and doing what you can for young engineers, mate. I uh, know the sector and particularly females would really appreciate it. So thanks for your time. Great, thank okay. you so much. No worries. Cheers.